For years, this is the thing you've requested me to do. This is the thing you've requested to see. It's time to take you behind the scenes. Many years ago, I used to film my life every single day and I used to show people what happened behind the scenes and a lot of things happened in my life, a lot of crazy things, businesses became bigger, I resigned from my company, I started a bunch of new companies that now live all around the world. And maybe most significantly, I started this podcast called The Diary of a CEO. And it has fundamentally changed my life. And if I'm being completely honest, it's changed my life because of you, because you have made the decision to watch the episodes, to share them with friends, and I've been thinking over the last 12 months, how can I take this audience a little bit deeper and offer a little bit more value? How can I show you the things that naturally you don't get to see when the cameras here on the Diary of a CEO stop rolling? I'm launching this new channel where you will get to see every day, every aspect of my life. Will. So this is Will. Will is joining me on this journey. Will has relocated from Edinburgh, moved to London at the drop of a hat. Why did you leave university, Will? Because I think this is gonna be a once in a lifetime opportunity. How old are you, Will? I'm 21. 21 years old. Let me pause there for one second. Some of you might be thinking that this is a terrible decision from Will, but I think when you're young, you have five buckets to fill. The first bucket is your knowledge. The second bucket is your skills. The third bucket is network. The fourth bucket is your resources. And the fifth bucket is your reputation. It's only these first two buckets that the world can never unspill. No professional crisis, nothing that happens in your life can take away your skills and your knowledge. So when you're young, you should be making your decisions to fill those two first buckets. Remember, there's typically in life two types of decision a type one decision and a type two decision. Now, type one decisions, you should take your time because those are doors that you can't walk back through. But with type two decisions, which are decisions that are reversible, make those decisions as quickly as possible. And if we weigh this up in the context of Will, who we've just met, at 21 years old, he's leaving a degree he can go back to, it's a type two decision, and he's choosing to put himself in a position to fill those two first buckets, to follow me around the world, to see how I operate behind the scenes every day of the week. I know I'm biased, but I think I think that's a great decision. You have to say, big decision. Big decision to leave university and come and do this with me, but this is the first chapter. This is the first page in this diary, behind the diary. I hope you enjoy it. We booked in Jack Whitehall today. It's a Thursday and he's coming in on Sunday. He's meant to be calling me back. And then Carmen will come with him on Sunday. Perfect. And Hattie will do the release. Karma slash Hattie can sort of liaise about cars. And if there's any questions in what you send through tomorrow, Karma can check in with Jack. Amazing, sounds great. I mean, the other thing that we haven't sort of touched upon. I said I wasn't going to do this on this and... I'm, wet. I'm now getting emotional. I um, I wanted to have a, a, a baby because I wanted him to be around and to, to know my child. So seeing how, how amazing he is with my niece, he's the most loving person ever. And so I want him to have a relationship with my kid. So we just finished filming Jack Whitehall, which was a very good episode, and we're this evening filming Mo Gaudat, which is his third time coming on, which is super exciting. Um, before he came on, he talked about happiness. The second one was a little bit about his book, Scary Smart, but it was more about the impact of the first episode, which I think actually was the most shared episode on Apple last year in the UK, so that was super cool. And he's coming on this time to talk about his book, Scary Smart, which is all about AI, which is a very hot topic at the moment. And I'm, I'm scared. Hey, how are you? <laughs> 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 
Hello. 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 In fact, as it relates to climate change, some of the world's top climate scientists and researchers and activists have realised that because climate change isn't close to home for a lot of people, they're not doing anything about it. And I think in all of those contexts, if you can bring the crisis closer, then you can bring your response to the crisis closer too. And I think there's not enough people fucking ringing the bell. So you think about this, I think we're at the, the, the phase in this of state staging the crisis, which is why I talk about corporations. Like get everybody to care. This, I posted something online a couple of weeks ago about how they're using voice um, cloning to call someone's parents and yes. tell them that their son's died and then to ask for money, etc. AI though, already being used by scammers. Now they're able to grab people's voices. That's how it's sounding really so lifelike. Somebody out there used an AI machine to trick my grandpa into thinking my little brother got in a wreck and died. He mimicked my brother's voice, said, oh, I'm about to get in a wreck, and then the phone went off. And like, not, like it's a negative thing. There's also a call to action there, which is like increased vigilance. But there are comments that go, this is negative clickbait and it's just causing worry and I think you shouldn't post things like this. I go, fucking hell, like if there's a bus it's coming. It's a fact. Do you go, by the way, there's a fucking bus coming, or do you go, no, I don't want to be negative. <laughs> I don't want to be fucking negative. Exactly. exactly. It's like, I don't want to hurt your yeah. feelings here, yeah. but you know, you're about, you're about to be so The bus hits and you can fuck it. Yeah. It's always a negative. when you came was something very different. It wasn't a live podcast, it was a theatrical, musical, choir-driven, spoken word journey slash experience through my life and all the lessons that I've learned along the way. No one else anywhere is doing what we are doing right now. And it is a privilege, and we just have to stay in gratitude the whole time. everything up a level. I think why we wanted to go bigger was predominantly just like ego, because you feel like you, sh you have to go bigger. But when we think about creating like even more impact, it's probably better to go the other way and see how we can make the show work with less people present, having them closer, making it more intimate and immersive. And that's really like, I've come to learn what the Diary of a CEO is. It's this platform that enables people to feel connected in some way. Vulnerability and opening up is the doorway to that connection. That's what we do in the Diary of a CEO. So I want to do a show that helps people to feel connected. The meeting you just saw was with the choir director, the musical director, the dance company director, the production director, and the director of the overall show. And in about nine months time, this show will be opening for potentially about 20 nights and potentially just at the Union Chapel, which is really exciting. So let's see how let's see what happens. 
I was saying we watched the um, AI episode with Mo. That's coming out. Which one? The AI episode with Mo. Mm. So good. It was, how did you feel about it? It's scary. A little bit scary. Yeah. But interesting also. I think it's like the right level of scary. Yeah. Think about just everything, like editing, um, making websites, doing what I do as a podcast host. This sounds like a crazy thing. You don't need a camera anymore. If you go on Mid Journey now and I type in Donald Trump crying in 1942, shot on a Polaroid camera in a English taxi cab driving down Fifth Street in New York. Let me ask Google Bart. <laughs> I'm going for dinner with Sarah Davies tonight in Manchester, around 7 to 8 p.m. She's a Geordie. <laughs> Please give me five restaurant suggestions that will really impress her. Places with five-star food. I think they're gonna say, they're gonna say five-star food, they're gonna say Australasia, they're gonna say the Ivy, they're gonna say, um, Pizza Street Kitchen. They might say Dishu. And they might say, let me think about this. They might say Rosso. I've got the five answers back from AI. What did they say? It did it instantly. <laughs> and it didn't agree with one of your recommendations. What did it say? Adam Reed at the French Michelin starred restaurant. Thank God for so You could, what it, I'm sure what it will do is it's going to text you in about an hour and it's going to say, oh, by the way, that table's not available. Because it can't just say yes and create a table in a restaurant that might be fully booked. It's I crazy. actually agree with you. I actually think, mm. um, I think you're right. You know what? This is like that scene from um, The Office with Dwight Schrute and the computers. The company is projecting record high sales and that by six o'clock, the website will be the new best salesman in the company. Wow, watch out, Dwight. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to be beaten by a website. Dwight Schrute ultimately oh, wins. Yeah. You win. You, you, you tell me where, where I should go. You don't want to go anywhere where you're going to get bothered either. Um, I don't mind being bothered. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first ever episode of Behind the Diary. If you liked it, and if you got to the end, can you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button? And if you do, then I'll do a part two. So, for Behind the Diary, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on Dragon's Den. I don't understand. Did you know about this, Sam? We got a deal. Thank you.